world news tonight. Jab overdrive. The United States races against time to achieve herd immunity. Global warning. The WHO sounds its sirens as the world shows signs of normalcy. Elsa rages. Tropical catastrophe makes landfall in Cuba and heads its way to Florida. Squirreling away. A special furry friend protects its humans' riches with its tiny paws. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Anuradhi Wickramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining with us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage from the global COVID crisis. As Americans celebrate the reopening of the nation, the Biden administration is renewing its vaccination push as just over 60% of U.S. adults receive one dose that is short of the U.S. president's July 4th vaccine goal. As holiday travelers head back home, celebrations of summer freedom will spark a renewed push to increase vaccinations. We're going to double down on our efforts to vaccinate millions of more Americans across July and August. Four states lag the nation with less than 40 percent taking even one dose of vaccine. Mississippi ranks last. Denise Taylor, who coached college basketball and in the WNBA, is trying to change that. I am coaching. I'm just coaching on a different court. Taylor is going one on one each day to make her pitch relatable. Among those not yet vaccinated around the country, some say they will not be persuaded. I told them that I'll take my vaccine on the way to the cemetery in about 15 or 20 years. As the president and first lady promote vaccines as safe, free and readily available, the White House touts progress while still short of its own goal of 70 percent of adults with at least one shot. COVID-19 has not been vanquished. We all know powerful variants have emerged like the Delta variant. That strain spreads more easily. Dr. Fauci says the unvaccinated are at greatest risk of death. Which is the reason why we say this is really entirely avoidable and preventable. Germany is planning on lifting a ban on most travelers from five countries hit by the Delta variant of COVID-19, including India and the UK. To give us an update on this, we have Other Than a World News special correspondent Inuka Oponso joining us now from Cleve in Germany. Inuka? Yes, Anuradhi. Germany's health agency said it would lift a ban on most travelers from the UK, India and three other countries hit by the Delta variant of COVID-19. The change eases a ban on entry for travelers who are not German residents or citizens, instead meaning anyone will be able to enter as long as they observe quarantine and testing rules. Germany introduced its virus variant country travel category in a bid to stop new coronavirus variants that have not yet spread widely on home soil. Chancellor Angela Merkel also hinted at a potential softening in Germany's stance towards travellers from Britain during a visit to London. Only citizens and residents of Germany are permitted to enter from a variant country and are subject to a two-week quarantine regardless of whether they are fully vaccinated or can provide a negative COVID-19 test. Despite the rising share of the Delta variant, the overall incidence in Germany has been steadily declining in recent weeks. Back to you Anuradhi. Thank you. That was Other Than a World News special correspondent Inika Ponso reporting from Cleve in Germany. As countries are showing signs of normality and easing restrictions, the head of emergency programs at the World Health Organization has warned that countries should be more careful and slow down on easing restriction measures. A World Health Organization official issued a stark warning on Monday that several countries had made a premature rush back to normality. As the United States and many parts of Europe ease social distancing restrictions, the WHO's head of emergencies program, Mike Ryan, warned that a new wave of COVID-19 infections could be coming. He added that for a lot of the world, the pandemic was just getting started. All of the countries of the Americas, we still have nearly one million cases a week, one million a week. You know, it's not, it's, it, it isn't over. Um, uh, and the same in Europe. Uh, in the European region, we've half a million cases a week. It's not like this thing has gone away. Ryan's warning comes amid renewed concern over the highly contagious Delta variant first detected in India. 
The variant has now spread to about 100 countries, and WHO officials have warned it could soon become the dominant form of the virus around the world. It sparked a resurgence of cases across parts of Europe, Asia, and the U.S. in pockets where vaccination rates remain low. It's also driving a spike in Japan, casting a shroud over the Tokyo Olympics later this month. We have some good news for you. As many countries are grappling with short supplies of COVID vaccines, South Korea is in talks with the mRNA vaccine producers Moderna to manufacture 1 billion jabs immediately. South Korea is in talks with mRNA vaccine makers, including Visa and Moderna, to produce COVID-19 shots in the country and says it is ready to offer to make up to 1 billion doses immediately. That's according to a senior government official. The plan, if approved, would help ease tight global supply of COVID-19 vaccines, particularly in Asia, which lacks behind North America and Europe in vaccine rollouts. It also puts South Korea a step closer to its ambition of becoming a major vaccine manufacturing center. South Korea already has deals to locally produce three coronavirus vaccines developed by AstraZeneca, Novavax and Russia. It also has a vaccine bottling and packaging deal with Moderna. Another government source said the local vaccine makers include Hemni Pharmaceuticals and Curatis. Hemni confirmed it has a big capacity reserved for a diabetes drug by pharmaceutical company Sanofi, which can be used for COVID-19 vaccine production as the project has stalled. The company's senior vice president, Kim Soo-jin, said Hemni has been reaching out to vaccine developers in the last year. Karatis, which makes a tuberculosis vaccine, said its new factory built last year can now be used for mRNA vaccine production. A Vice spokesperson said the company is making efforts to enhance its COVID-19 vaccine supply chain, but added that they do not have specific announcements at this time. Israel's health ministry, on the other hand, says that Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine is less effective in halting the spread of the Delta variant of COVID-19. The ministry's study compared it to its efficacy against previous strains of the virus. According to a preliminary study released by Israel's health ministry on Monday, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine is less effective in halting the spread of the highly transmissible Delta variant compared to other strains of COVID-19. The study collected data over the past month showing the vaccine is only 64 percent effective at preventing infection among those who've been fully vaccinated. This is compared to the estimated efficacy of 94 percent against the previous strains. However, the study showed the vaccine is still 93 percent effective against serious illness and hospitalization. According to Professor Nadav Davidovich, who sits on the Israeli government's expert advisory committee, the Delta variant is a lot more infectious, but when fully vaccinated, it does not lead to as much serious illness or death. As of Monday, Israel reported nearly 2,600 active COVID-19 cases, more than double the previous week, but only 35 people were classified as seriously ill. Israel's latest study showed a significantly lower efficacy compared to that of a previous study conducted in the UK. Public Health England in May said the Pfizer vaccine provided 88 percent protection against symptomatic infection with Delta and 93 percent against the Alpha variant. The UK study also showed two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine provided 66 percent protection against the Delta variant. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. Organizers of the 2021 Olympic Games have offered Japanese students the chance of a lifetime to have special access to the tickets for the competitions. But a spike in COVID-19 cases has schools and parents rethinking their plans, a potential blow for hundreds and thousands of young fans. Olympic dreams aren't only for the athletes. In Japan, organizers have set aside a million tickets for students, giving them a chance to watch some of the world's best athletes compete. But amid a fresh surge of COVID cases, schools are facing some hard decisions. 
Principal Jun Tashiro had originally planned to take 500 of his primary students to Tokyo. We are still preparing to help make our children's dreams come true, but there may be some risks that cannot be resolved. Tashiro has tried to map out the pros and cons. He says right now, because of the risk, he's leaning no. And he is not alone. More than half the tickets for the school program have already been canceled. COVID cases in Tokyo spiked to more than 700 last Saturday, a five-week high. And with vaccines in short supply, parents are worried too. Adults have not yet all been vaccinated, and vaccinations for children haven't even started. So it's really hard to decide whether to let my child go or not. Japan has already barred all spectators from overseas and capped domestic audiences at 10,000 for each venue. If cases continue to rise, organizers say they will push ahead with the competitions without the audience. Tropical storm Elsa made landfall near Cuba's Bay of Pigs and started plowing through the island nation, on track to Florida after causing at least three deaths elsewhere in the Caribbean. Tropical storm Elsa made landfall on Cuba's south central coast on Monday, pounding the island nation with heavy rain and sustained winds peaking near 95 miles per hour. Storm surges were affecting Cuba's southern coast and rain was expected to cause significant flash flooding and mudslides. More than 100,000 people in Cuba have been evacuated from flood-prone areas, most going to homes of family and friends, but thousands also going to government shelters, according to state-run media. Elsa, which previously wreaked havoc in Barbados, St. Lucia, Haiti, Jamaica and the Dominican Republic, causing at least three deaths in the Caribbean, was on track to reach Florida as early as Tuesday. In Seminole, Florida, residents filled sandbags as they braced for what was likely to be another especially active hurricane season. If we have a lot of water, which we might, uh, I, and I, I wait till later to get sandbags, there won't be any left, and then I'll have a wet bedroom. So this year I decided to be prepared and uh, come early and put them away for the rest of the hurricane season because, you know, it's, it's Florida. The U.S. National Hurricane Center said Elsa was expected to pass near the Florida Keys early Tuesday and move near or over portions of the west coast of Florida on Tuesday and Wednesday, adding that tornadoes were possible across South Florida as early as Monday night. French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Angela Merkel and Chinese President Xi Jinping has agreed that there is a window of opportunity now for talks aimed at reviving the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. To give us more details, other than a World News Special Correspondent Chaitanya Dharmaratna from Normandy in France reports. The three leaders who spoke via video conference agreed on the need to move negotiations forward in order to get a deal as soon as possible and avoid the risk of nuclear proliferation. During six rounds of talks in Vienna, the six countries that remain parties to the agreement – Russia, China, Germany, France, Britain and Iran – have been trying to resolve issues on how the United States can rejoin and how Iran can return to compliance. Then President Donald Trump pulled out of the agreement in 2018, but President Joe Biden repudiated his predecessor and said that U.S. wants to return to the pact. The last round of talks ended in Vienna on June 20. It's not yet clear when the talks will resume. The 2015 accord is aimed at preventing Iran from developing nuclear weapons, which Tehran denies it is seeking. France and Germany said that the three leaders also talked about relations between the European Union and China. They discussed international trade, climate protection and biodiversity, and cooperation in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. Gunmen have kidnapped 140 students from a boarding school in northwestern Nigeria, the latest in a wave of student kidnappings. Kaduna State Police spokesman confirmed the attack, but did not provide details on the number of pupils taken. About 150 students were missing on Monday after armed men raided a boarding school in Nigeria's Kaduna State, the latest in a wave of mass kidnappings targeting school children for ransom. Police said they were in hot pursuit alongside military personnel. The attack on the Bethel Baptist High School 
is the 10th mass school abduction since December in northwest Nigeria. Parent John Evans said he had recently told his daughter that God would protect her while she studied at the school. Dozens of distraught parents gathered at the school compound, some weeping and crying out, standing in groups awaiting news. Police said gunmen shooting wildly attacked overnight and overpowered the school's security guards, taking an unspecified number of students into a nearby forest. A police statement said 26 people, including a female teacher, had been rescued. Armed men, known locally as bandits, have made an industry of kidnapping students for ransom in northwest Nigeria. With Kaduna State particularly hard hit, they have taken nearly 1,000 people from schools in the last eight months, more than 150 of whom remain missing. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Hong Kong's leader Carrie Lam has responded to a warning that Facebook, Google and other tech firms would have to stop offering services in the city if privacy laws there change. Israel will deliver about 700,000 expiring doses of Pfizer-BioNTech's coronavirus vaccine to South Korea later this month, after which South Korea will give Israel back the same number already on order from Pfizer in September and October. Villagers in northern Ayodhya district on the bank of Sarayu River have lost dozens of houses and mud huts to erosion which accelerates during monsoon season. Russia strongly supports the Southeast Asian diplomatic effort to end the crisis in Myanmar and has conveyed similar messages to the country's military leadership. With over 2.3 million COVID cases, Indonesia has been up to one of the worst affected countries in Asia. The uptick in cases has left hospitals short of oxygen. As he prepares to blast off into a new career stage, Jeff Bezos leaves an enduring legacy after transforming Amazon from a modest online bookseller into one of the world's most powerful corporations. Jeff Bezos has stepped down as the CEO of Amazon exactly 27 years after founding it from his garage. But what kind of future is there for the company without its visionary at the helm? Amazon's success has earned it a heavy amount of scrutiny and its next chapter could be even more embattled than the last. Bezos's replacement, Angie Jassy, built the company's massively successful cloud computing business. He'll have to steer Amazon through a number of hearings. In the U.S., the Federal Trade Commission has already launched an investigation, while in Brussels, lawmakers are needling Amazon with antitrust probes, accusing it of quashing competition from its own marketplace sellers. Amazon is also targeted by legislation. The U.S. government is proposing five different bills that would curb the power of all tech giants. The company would be affected also by global plans for a minimum corporate tax rate. Amazon is battling a growing push for unionization on the home front as well, with U.S. labor giant the Teamsters declaring Amazon its top national priority. For Jassy, then, it's a loaded promotion. He won't just have to lead the company, he'll also have to manage how it's perceived in a society that's increasingly hostile to big tech. And Bezos' shadow will continue to loom over the company. He's staying on as executive chair and will still be involved in crucial decisions. And finally tonight, Turkish jeweler Mehmet Yüksel is squirreling his earnings away as he has found the perfect guard to protect his earnings. His cash register is guarded by a loyal squirrel named Memelkan, who won't let anyone but the jeweler take cash from the register. Along with his brothers, Memokan was rescued by Yüksel three months ago, with the squirrel's mother found dead. Since then, they've been living together due to an injury in Memokan's paw. But Yüksel says once he recovers, the squirrel will return to nature because that's where he belongs. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for another edition of World News. I'm Anradhi Vikramasinghe. Until then, stay safe and have a great night.